they, they do oh, me like we're that. hearing from an Indian and it wasn't like um man, it's crazy around here, man. It's getting really bad around and it's just like this is like a one off. Well, tonight we're hearing from an Indianapolis woman who survived being shot at this Southside gas station. Then he like took two steps back and was like, I don't want to have to do this. And then he pulled the gun out and he pointed it at me. Tonight, Courtney Hall says this happened when a stranger tried to carjack her. She tells us she was shot by accident when another stranger tried to protect her from the would-be thief. Fox 59's Jesse Wells spoke what? to her after she got out of the hospital and shares the moment, she says, led up to this shooting. Here at this Marathon gas station on Thompson Road Sunday night, police were called to a homicide that started when a woman walked outside and saw a stranger pulling on her door handle, trying to force his way into her SUV. And I was like, could you please move away from the door? My kids are in here and I'm just trying to get home. That woman, Courtney Hall, who asked that we not show her face, claims because her four young kids were in the back seat, she refused to cooperate with the suspect who then assaulted her. I was fighting him and then he like took two steps back and was like, I don't want to have to do this. And then he pulled the gun out and he pointed it at me. Courtney says that's when she screamed for help. And this man, he um, was walking out the gas station and he was like, hey, what are you doing to her? Get off of her. Police claim that bystander then shot and killed 26-year-old Devin Dungan. <laughs> okay, okay. Glider. By, by, <laughs> by the by, well, the bystander was a glider for sure. Why? Because he didn't kill her too. <laughs> the, the good Samaritan, yeah, the good Samaritan was was, was, was a kill her kid, whatever. Is it good, is it gonna end in a lawsuit? Is my question. Yo, gliders, yo, people, people are fucking fighting back. This is this is heartwarming, man. Can you tell? Walking can, out the okay, gas station, right, and he was you, like, no right, "Can you tell? Can you tell if it's a glider or not by the brand of gasoline? Like Marathon, maybe." You know. Nah, nah. We got marathons are everywhere in the hood. But I think you could, if you knew what kind of whether they got 91, 93, or 95, you could tell. You could tell you could 89, 91, or 93. I mean, you could tell if it, if it was if it was a glad about that. But um, you, you can know, tell if they know. got a backwoods if they got a backwoods yeah. sign in the fr in the front window. <laughs> This man, he um, was walking out the gas station and he was like, hey, what are you doing to her? Get off of her. Police claim that bystander then shot and killed 26-year-old Devin Dungan. The shooter stayed on scene and cooperated. Courtney believes Dungan arrived at the marathon in this black Buick, which had been reported stolen in a carjacking involving different victims at this business on Man Road. That happened just a half Look hour. the carnage. I mean, like... The fact that people like act like this is no, they carjack, and then they use the carjack car to carjack some. Yeah, I mean, like what was his what was his end motive here? Like what was what was his big plan? Like to carjack to carjack to carjack? Like how do you make money off of that? No, it's for fun. It's just for fun. Yeah, Jesus. so, so the predation. carjack is dead. Yes. Yeah, sure. yeah. It, it's predation though. This is predation. This is like like how black says. This is. They're predators. This is not really for any, like, this is an expression of their dominance. This is nut swinging. This is a lion just fucking strangling the shit out of a fucking impala and not even eating it. You know what I'm saying? This is like fucking, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is just predation, man. Yeah. It's like when dolphins rape. Exactly. And then, and then he woke up in hell. Buick, which had been reported stolen in a carjacking involving different victims at this business on Man Road. That happened just a half hour before the deadly shooting. Never stopping at a gas station at night again. I haven't stopped thinking about it. Despite the terrifying ordeal, one bullet tore through Courtney's driver's side door. Her wrist and arm remained bandaged after she was hit by two bullets but she still praised the bystander who fired the shots for stepping in to help. Yeah, I was real thankful, like, because I don't know what would have happened, you know, if that man wasn't there, you know, to help me. Jesse Wells, Fox 59 News. So what is he going to do? He's going to take her and her four kids. He's going to take the car with her four kids in it. What, is he going to, like, drive off and then, like, let them out? 
somewhere. Probably. And then he already had a car, so did he, was he working with somebody? Maybe so. Or but maybe, but but uh, but uh, if he would have had a go go band to join, that's true. <laughs> None of this would have happened. There's not enough go go in there. The man was questioned and released yeah. without being arrested. The Marion County Prosecutor's Office will now decide if any criminal charges will be filed. Oh. It could have it could have been that but they believe this may have been drug related. They have not released any identities of the Of course, they shopping with anyway, the drug money. The police headquarters, Maggie Kent, Channel Six, Action News. But they led with shoppers. Like, stop. Ah, you remember you Ellen did this story on parole is dead Ah, remember you did that story on that um the postal worker that got killed. Yeah, that was getting the weed packages and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I just yeah. yeah, I just found out that's where he died. He was a he was um into drugs. No, they that that's an assumption. That's an assumption. They they didn't get a package and they killed him because they didn't get the package. So the, 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 that doesn't mean that he, he stole it. Even though he So he was a dirty a dirty postal worker? So it's we a lot of them. We could have, but I, we need more evidence of that because those packages get seized at the um, at the, um, the the distribution center all the time because they have um, scanners there that can um, intercept those things. And this was but, back in two thousand one when I was doing this. But that if that was not delivered uh, due to the the person not being home, but it never showed back up at the post office. And if he was re if he was steady on that shit and always bringing heavy boxes. And that shit might have smelled loud. He might have mm -hmm. snatched that shit up, man. Could have. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it could have. It could have. But I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. The, the, uh, when you look into that guy's background, it doesn't. If he was doing that shit, he, you know, uh, that would have been um, out of character. Ellen out on parole is dead tonight after being killed by a homeowner during a break-in. It turns out this was the end of a violent day for that intruder when he ran into a Tangipahoe Parish mother who refused to be a victim. Yeah, and Mike McDaniel has more for us tonight. This is Glider House. Yellow police tape was still outside Marquita Hampton's Tangipahoe Parish home Tuesday sure? morning. We Take it back. But police. Two days before, Ooh. the police say her neighbor shot and killed a man during a home invasion. They had like the little yellow tape or whatever. What's wrong with her, man? When did she just give up? <laughs> nah, man. She got elephantitis, man. Sure. At least I nailed the... That's another, that says another crime committed by an EBT card. Right there. Yeah, man. Hey man, look, this is this is a rough area, man. She but hey, I'm up. not gonna talk about that lady. She killed the man that tried to kill her. So, oh, she killed oh, her. She's oh, no, no, she's a neighbor. Ah, she's a neighbor. Uh, oh well, she, she don't need to get on camera. She's a product <laughs> of her environment, man. Or for us tonight. Yellow police tape was still outside Marquita Hampton's Tangipahoe Parish home Tuesday morning. We seen nothing but police. Two days before, authorities say her neighbor shot and killed a man during a home invasion. They had like the little yellow tape or whatever wrapped around our house. It happened early Sunday morning at the Hillside Mobile Home Park on Klein Road, just outside of Hammond. It's incumbent upon the homeowner or a person to use reasonable force to protect themselves. Chief Jimmy Travis with the Tangipahoe Parish Sheriff's Office says 51-year-old Robert Reams broke into the woman's home while she and her two young kids were asleep entered the residence with a covering over his face, armed with a lug wrench and a shovel. Travis says Reams walked past one child sleeping on the couch, then went into the mother's bedroom. After a scuffle, the mom grabbed a gun and shot Reams in the upper thigh. Subsequently hit a femoral artery and he bled out on scene. Just hours before Ice. the shooting, Travis Ice. says Reams attempted to carjack a man who was giving him a ride. Travis says Reams was also out on parole for a 2001 armed robbery conviction. He served about 20 years before. What's up with all these brothers doing a dub 15, 20 coming out and immediately going back to crab? Like that, that's that 80% recidivism rate, man. He could have got he could have got a fat glider and just lived off her ass, man. He had to do that. He could have got a job anywhere. They give him jobs like no, he, he wanted to be in a cage. Wow, this is he in a cage in hell now. 
basically. It's a shame, but that's it, a lot it, cheaper it, for us. Ooh, ooh, Damn, ooh. Kudos to the mom for shooting. Yeah, net positive. And he got them teardrops, so he must kill somebody. Oh, yeah. Being released last March. He had two felony convictions before that, one for drugs, another for theft. This incident fits the Louisiana laws when it pertains to justifiable homicide. Travis says the break-in was random and doesn't expect criminal charges. Because law enforcement can't be everywhere at once, Travis says homeowners need to be able to protect themselves. Criminals need to take in consideration that not everybody's going to be a victim. I haven't seen her since the incident happened. Back at her home, Hampton can't stop thinking about what if Reams would have broken into her home instead of her neighbors. That could have been my baby. That could have been my kids in the house. That could have been me shooting somebody that uh, just bringing tears to my eyes just by thinking about it. A thought just feet away from being reality. Mike McDaniel, I wouldn't see you would have scared him. Girl. Neighbors are telling us the mother and her. Kids. I know, no one's gonna break in your shit. You looking? <laughs> he would have said, oh, "He would have said, I'm sorry, ma'am,' and left. <laughs> Wrong house, my bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I was looking for somebody. I'm sorry. We, we just take the sweet tea, and I'm gonna be on my way, man. <laughs> wow. He probably would have lived. It's haven't been staying at that home since the yeah. shooting. They say the mom does seem to be okay. He'd have startled her and she'd have fell on top of him. On the job is out of the hospital. Good evening, I'm Brian Blakely. And I'm Alicia Barnes. Well, that Uber driver says he's just grateful tonight to be alive after he was shot twice in his shoulder. Well, Queen City News reporter Daniel P. 